Welcome everybody for another AoE2 DE custom campaign. And this time it will be Harald Hardrada, famous for being a super awesome hero unit. And also um, he's in the Hastings campaign. And this one was done by uh, Elam, who is the same guy who did Vitautus. And so, yeah, let's, uh, let's do some Viking stuff. Hey, you want to hear about the story of Hardrada? You are asking the right people. Most of our generation of fighters have gone to Valhalla, leaving only myself here, an old and lone man, to tell young people like you about our past. In the past few hundred years, the Vikings were brave warriors and great navigators. Our footprints spread across the vast territory from the European continent to the North Pole. With the blessing of the god Odin, we successfully spread the grace of gods to those ignorant European barbarians. Feels bad, man. Oh boy. Uh, Harald is an alternative among Vikings. His elder brother Olaf Haraldsson was the leader of the warriors looting at sea when uh, he was young, fighting against the Danes and Anglo-Saxons. He later went to the kingdom of France. When he returned, he gave up his belief in Odin, began to preach the so-called god of Christians, and adopted a cruel policy to force Norwegian people to convert. His younger brother, Harald Hardrada, could only follow in his brother's footsteps and, all, and confirm his belief in Christianity. Since then, Christianity had been preached in the Norwegian region, and we're all focused to it. it everyone was forced to be Christian, but I still haven't insisted on giving up my faith to Odin because I'm a Viking and stuff. When Olaf had enthroned, had been enthroned as the Norwegian king for over 10 years, was soon encountered by a threat from Denmark, a country ruled by a rival Viking as well, uh, Knut the Great, the king of England uh, as well as Norway later. In the early years, Knut proposed that King Olaf could be his subordinate to rule Norway. Of course, no agreement uh, could be reached between the two kings. This kind of monarch monarchical relationship is definitely unacceptable to Olaf. We all know how thirsty Knut was during the conquest of England and Denmark. Oh boy. Uh, Norway would then be his next objective. So he decided to act first, follow... Olaf to unite the Swedish against Knut's forces. Unfortunately, the gods Thor and Odin did not stand by our side this time. Luckily, me and Harald, as well as some of his cronies, still survived after this fierce battle. But in the following uh, successive battles, all kinds of sufferings came to us. I thought that Odin must have something to tell us. Oh, Knut then assembled 50 warships and sailed to the coast of Norway. Though Olaf was unable to resist, we had to follow him to Sweden and assemble as many troops as possible to avenge it in the future uh the remaining in norway were all pled all forced to pledge loyalty to canute instead olaf and his brother harald did not expect their throne was seized in vain to regain the throne we must pay a heavy price for it especially for olaf odin who is extremely thirsty for a sip of water in the fountain of wisdom uh he hung on a tree in the violent wind for nine days and nights stabbed by a spear he had no bread to satisfy his hunger and no drops to quench his thirst with his eye in exchange for infinite wisdom and being able to see everything that happened in the world soon you will know the truth uh that you must pay an equal price for anything you want oh boy that was a that was a lot of reading <laughs> but it's viking time Uh, Olaf, uh, Knut has seeds my throne in Norway, but now we are being encountered by his Norwegian dogs. Uh, oh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Um, I'm glad you've come to help us, Harald. We may win or die here, but we cannot leave the throne to Knut in vain. Let's have a taste of, of our axe. Oh, wait, are these bad guys? Where are you guys going? Olaf! Oh, what is this? Oh, of course, we're Cyan, because we're Harald Hadrada from Hastings. What is going on here? Oh, there's Olaf. Um. Oh, okay, I guess they're all just supposed to guard this pavilion that has 1,000 HP. Uh, Harold must survive before he... Harold must survive before he arrives. Kiev and Ruth, what? Protect Olaf's pavilion until the timer ends. At least five soldiers until the timer ends. Protect Olaf until the timer ends. Okie dokie. I mean, we have a big old army of Norse warriors and stuff. Oh, Harald Hadrada, man. Such an awesome hero unit. Does have one less range than normal, though. 
He's like a throwing axeman, berserk version, of course, and he has a super fast attack rate. Oh yeah, the, the Wololo priests will heal us up. Okay, anything else? Uh, Harald can support a pop limit of 150, but he cannot advance beyond the castle age. At the same time, Harald's men can only construct longboats and docks. It's not, necessary, it's not necessary for Harald to stay in Norway or reconquer the North Sea Empire. It is not the main objective. He should find a new warlord to serve. The North Sea Empire will not attack Harald unless Harald's men get close to their border. The North Sea Empire has no interest in fighting uh, Harald after the Battle of Stiklestad. The Vikings surrounding the Baltic Sea uh, would like to join Harald's army if they hear that Harald has joined the Kievan Rus. Um, that's a lot of stuff. I am tired of reading. I want to play. But like, looks like we've got uh, the Rus, the Pechenegs, um, the Poles, and then a bunch of Vikings. Well, it would definitely, definitely be beneficial to keep this monk alive. And another Viking campaign. Lots of Viking campaigns, man. Custom campaigns, I guess. I mean, I, I think it helps that Vikings are a very popular civilization and they have a lot of great campaign material. And, uh, yeah, I'm definitely not complaining. But, you know, this does pick up, I think, pretty nicely from... Uh, the, the Bassi custom campaign we played not too long ago. Oh, go get him, monk! There we go, got another Norse warrior for our side. House Carls. But I mean, we just have a bunch of infantry units, as does uh, Olaf Haraldson. Really not much more to it than just... Well, try to take the best fights we can. Speaking of which, we have very few units left. Kind of are supposed to preserve our soldiers. So I guess we'll have to rely on, uh, on Olaf's army. His army of snowmen. But things to, seem to be going fairly well so far. Where are you going, guys? Yeah, his units have plus two, plus two. Ours only have plus one, plus one. The priest healing us up is very nice, though. Okay, now they have plus one defense. I don't know if we get anything for having the soldiers alive, but, you know, we're only going to use them as a last resort. Almost there. 250. So it looks like we're just kind of chilling in the north of the map. So I guess the North Sea Empire would... We're probably like in Poland somewhere, right? Uh, Canute the Great! Forward, leave leave no alives! I, Canute, is the, is the king of Norway! Oh boy, the English translation's definitely a little rough around the edges. Yeah, Harald Hadrada's just doing work. Uh, I hope they don't ex overextend themselves too much. Okay, yeah, seems like we're doing alright. This is probably their last big attack. Yeah, we're doing we're doing just fine. Berserks will even heal themselves. Yeah. I 
30 seconds. We can do it. I hope. It's just instantly there's like, you know, a hundred units coming out. Uh, look, enemy's blood, even- oh, we cannot fight against more of Knut's dogs. Olaf is soon to fall in battle. We must escape until more dogs arrival. What? Harald must survive. Uh, okay, we have to escape to the, the flag or something. Run away! Uh, we're just gonna leave Olaf to his doom? Oh, well. Oh, I feel like they all just commit seppuku. Alrighty. We can take down these guys. I hope. Looks like everyone's in Castle Age except Vikings. Oh, of course you have murder holes. We have not much left. To yeah. Well, we, we, we did kind of lose a lot of people. Ooh, let's run away. Let's find this happy little village. Happy little village. Uh, Norway is not suitable for us to stay in anymore. We just leave here before Knut's dogs kill us all. Oh, okay, we actually are in Norway. So, uh, we must bring Harald to Yaroslav. Find the Vikings surrounding the Baltic Sea. Hello! What's up, Yaroslav? Oh, he's all the way over here. Jarl! Not just a Jarl, a Jarl! Did you get this nice little town? Ultilagi! Yaroslav the Wise, can't imagine what a big surprise this is for me. For now, you're my guest, Harald. Kievan Rus needs an outstanding commander like you to extend the border with that more, hab more habitants. It's been an honor to fight and die as a Viking, but now death means nothing for you, Harald. Why not choose to join me and prepare for vengeance? Come, Harald, command my men and show your talent in battle. Buin. Buin. Yeah. Alrighty. Okay, so to protect the Kievan Rus' town center... And destroy the Polish Krepos. Oh, okay, so we have an ally here with the the, the Rus. Uh, I suppose we need to find a spot for a town center. Considering that this land here seems somewhat occupied. But yeah, I mean, Vitautus was like a really sick campaign. Like, I know the English guys is not that great. Um, but if you haven't seen the Vitautus campaign playthrough I did... Uh, the actual scenario design is, is so good. Or at least it wasn't by Tautus. And I imagine it will be here as well. Okay, we have some resources over here. I'd like to find a forest. Ooh, this looks nice. We are in Castle Age already. Uh, so you guys want to, like... So we'll get the Petchen Eggs and then destroy the Krepos. Oh, okay, so it looks like there's one down there. We have no stone, but there's a little we can mine over there. Oh, we also have no uh, population space.
but let's just keep exploring. So yeah, I don't think we're supposed to go back to Norway. We still have this transport ship to scout around, though. Man, I always get so excited for new custom campaigns. Although, speaking of campaigns, um, I'm recording this the day after the uh, AoE fan preview event thing, so now we will know that there is another um, DLC on the horizon, which means more campaigns, which means more YouTube playthroughs. Probably. As in, very certainly. Unfortunately, uh, it's not revealed what is that exactly going on? We know it's called Dawn of the Dukes, but uh, and it takes place in quote unquote Eastern Europe, but we don't know exactly what that entails, or at least you don't. Ha! Okay, here are the pets and eggs. We can take them. We have no upgrades. They have decent upgrades. Oh no, guys. I might have gotten a little overconfident. But thankfully my hero unit's OP as hell! Oh no. Must save him! Well, you know... A little bit awkward. Oh, wait, are the Roos gonna help us out? Oh, they're such good guys, man. Okay, now they're stealing our sheep. That that kind of uh, makes me uh, question them a little bit. Okay, new plan. Don't throw away your... Oh, what, you jerks! Stealing my sheep! Thankfully, it seems like the Petchen Eggs are either a dummy AI or they just, like, will infinitely spawn re uh, units. Not like, you know, horrible infinite unit spam, but that's just how a lot of AIs work, is they just get resources over time. With which they, uh, you know, train stuff to get ya. Anyway. Uh, seems like it would be actually very much worth it to dock. Oh wait, no, we can only train... Wait, I know it says we can only train longboats, but maybe that means... I mean, the, the translation just might be in, like the only warship you can train are longboats. And you can train uh, fishing ships. Because that would be very nice. Okay, so there's... Oh! The North Sea Empire is a little... Being a little aggro. Okay, yeah. So it was just a, a slight mistranslation, I guess. Or at least maybe it's just confusing to me. We can make fishing ships. I mean, I guess, why else would they put fish on the map? So we're just going to go ahead and build up right now. Let's actually go ahead and start mining some stone. We do have to be kind of careful for the Petchen Eggs. Because oh, like, they're right here, man. <clears throat> uh oh. <gasps> oh my god! Yeah, I know. I know they are, man. I'm working on it. I don't really have a lot of units. Even if I lose some villagers, I, I don't want to lose Harald or Drada, because as you can see, he is an amazing unit. 
Yes, I know our leader is in danger. I'm working on it. Oh, whoops. Okay. I will... Oh, those guys all died. Okay, um, here's what we're gonna need to do. You got actually a lot of food in the bank. So we're just going to start buying some stone, start adding in some town centers, and kind of just hole up over here. How are our teammate? Ally guys doing? Okay. Should soon be able to get a third town center. So we can go full boomer mode, of course. Now, our army composition with Vikings, uh, at this point, with only Castle Age units available, will likely just involve uh, trying to go for some crossbowmen. Of course, our eco is going to be really sick. As long as we don't get housed, which is kind of a, a popular thing. Among me. Okay, now we can start mining gold over here and more gold over here. Can uh, build a dock like here as well. Get gill nuts. I mean, we have a 150 pop limit. It's pretty good. Anyway, we seem to be safe for the time being. All we can do is hope our allies are safe. <clears throat> well, um... Yeah. Spoke too soon. Well, honestly, all we can really do is hope that they can just survive for a little while by themselves. I mean, they do... Oh, they even have relics. What? You can't reach that fish? That's lame. Stop stealing my sheep, everybody! Guess I should just take them now. Oh. Stop! Oh, I don't even have fletching, yeah. That's why my TC is being kind of like a pea shooter. Well, Elam's campaigns, certainly, uh, they don't mess around. That is faux show. Yes, I know the Pechenegg horsemen are doing their Pechenegg horsemen things. Okay, well at least our ally's better, like, he's in a better position than we are. Okay, uh, that's too many on gold, actually. Oh, actually the water ends right there. Okay, 
Yeah, it makes sense though to go for like uh, some combination of archers and pikemen, rams. Oh, I never got ballistics. Natural sources of food are running a little bit low, but our archer mass is slowly growing. Allies not thriving, but not dying. Yeah. Grab you. Okay, and then we'll start be start to able to clear out dudes this way. Let me get like a TC right here or something. Stop it, you! Why do you have plus three attack? Humans don't have Bracer? Especially not in Castle Age. That's like doubly wrong. <laughs> okay, let's start uh, with the Siege Workshop. As well as another archery range. Get some more dudes over there. Oh, hey, another deer. Radida. Oh, didn't we, uh... We got plate mail a while ago, I think. Should help, uh, pikemen. Imagine we'll need pikemen a lot since we're up against, you know, Lithuanians and Cubans. Let's grab the thumb ring. But uh, for now, crossbowmen. You're going to do better in these smaller scale situations. Oh, I think I lost my guy. Uh, Harold Hadrada. Whoops. That's a lot of cav archers with very good upgrades. Not ideal. It must be said. Oh, what? Elite Norse warrior? Okay. I didn't know that was a thing. Uh, it shares a hotkey with my swordsman line, so that's going to be kind of awkward. Capped ram? Okay, I guess we'll just go for these guys. Oh, actually, if I hit my my S hotkey, which is the same for Militia and Norse Warriors, um, it just makes the Norse Warrior. That's actually really convenient. So what are these guys' stats? Oh, well, the Elite Upgrade's not in yet. Holy man, that's good. Oh, 
Alrighty, let's get these guys into action. Oh, I forgot about this place. Whoops! But yeah, 13 base attacks, 77 HP, 2 pierce armor. All good stuff. Now I'm gonna go there. Oh. Let's get another siege workshop. Yeah, the fetch and eggs seem like they're uh, getting wrecked eventually. Oh wait, I can make longboats. Forgot about that. Of course, if I can get a castle, I can get chieftains, get some extra bonus damage versus cavalry. Now, I know it shouldn't affect the Norse warriors, but, I mean, they have the same hotkey, right? That that totally checks out. Yep. Let's get you guys. So uh, at least try and mine some stone. Soon we'll be able to start taking down the stables and archery ranges. I guess they have a castle somewhere since they're making Kipchaks. Or they could just be training them out of archery ranges like cheaters. So already 32 minutes into this video. I guess like by default I'll try and play the custom campaigns at, you know, 1.7 times speed. But uh, if this is looking to take a long time I might have to bump it up to times 2 speed. Because uh, ain't nobody want to watch a hour and a half long video. Uh, I guess I should maybe mix in some pikemen just as trash units. But yeah, these uh, are essentially just champions that we have. Okay, so they do, they do not have a castle. They're just cheaters. But it's okay, we're cheaters too, we have these guys. The Norse warriors. Oh, whoa, that's a lot of idols. Oh yeah, it is five prep posts we have to destroy. Yeah, we're just gonna be on the safe side and bump it up to times two speed. Anyway, Petronegs should be on the way out. These nomads are even no match for our infantry. Our tree of infants.
Oh, what? There's one dude left? Now there isn't. Anyway, um, the Rus are doing a pretty nice job just defending themselves. They're not really making any headway against uh, the Polish, but that's okay. Uh, actually running out of wood lines over here. And it, it's not like we have to destroy castles, they're just crap posts. I wonder if this is the area you are supposed to settle, or maybe if there's like a choice you can settle either over here or over here, just depending on whether you're going to be closer to the Pechenegs or... Uh, the Poles, but I imagine the Poles are going to be the much scarier army since they have, uh, you know, crep posts and stuff. Oh, what are, what are you guys? Alrighty. Old Tilagi. Oh, there's another crap post. Crap post. They have a bit of a navy too, it seems. Okay, I guess I got you guys as well. Let's get ourselves a forward position. And we are chilling at max pop. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Deer. I didn't mean to click you. Whoops. Just get that to be on the safe side. They have Norse warriors. Everybody has Norse warriors. It's just the thing. Okay, don't have any straight units. Yeah, they do have plus three. All right, we got a castle of our own. Let's grab chieftains. Okay, the game is starting to lag. That's not so great. Our population is dropping like a fly. Also less than great. Let's get some Berserks. I mean, Castle Age Berserks are going to be absolutely awful compared to our Norse warriors, but, you know, it's something. Oh yeah, supplies did not affect them. Hopefully our production is just going to be good enough here to carry us through. And our castle that's helping defend us. Stop it, you! Another crop post is down that way. Oh, 
Oh, that's a lot of dudes. That is a lot of dudes. Hey, where are you guys going? Oh, no, that is a lot of dudes. Okay. This is going to be a bit trickier than I thought. Okay, at least we have all of this forward production, which is really important. And now we're back at Max Pop. That is also good. Ah, it's more like it. I'm really glad they gave us Cap Grams. This mission would probably be pretty annoying if not, or without them. But as it stands, it's actually a, a really good mission. Like, really good first mission. Challenging, but not grindy. That's exactly the uh, the balance you want to hit. It is fairly long, for sure. Oh yeah, whoops. Okay, there's their town center. What is up with this lag? Is it my frame rate? Nope, it's just DE. I guess that's good news. At least it's not something I can control. We're at 3 out of 5, and there is 4 out of 5 and 5 out of 5, respectively. Yeah, apologies for the little bit of lag, guys. And a 4. But yeah, honestly, like this is this is shaping up to be another really good uh, custom campaign. Although, although it will require some more uh, Ornlu on the fly translations. There we go. Miesko the second, order your men to stop. I surrender. I don't know. Something happened. Olaf, who fought bloody in the fierce battle, soon was shot down by three arrows. The leader's death caused the Norwegian army to collapse quickly. Harald crawled into the trench with difficulty in the chaos and covered himself in corpses of his comrades, only to barely escape from the hunting uh, hunting by Knut's army. Harald was only 15 years old that year. Wow. He was quite the axe thrower. After that fiasco, I and some... Myself and some other warriors were scattered by the enemy and wandered the wilderness. We met Harald after a few days, but he was very different from before, as if he was a different person. He no longer laughed with the warriors while drinking heavily. At the age of 15, he had no smile or expression on his face. Harald's face was pale and his gaze was colder than snow. Since then, we could see how thirsty he was for desire, power, war, revenge, and all that stuff. And then, yeah, all, all that. We did not protect Olaf and Harald. Uh, when I saw Harald again, my heart was extremely guilty, and I could only continue to follow in his footsteps. Otherwise, how could I face his brother's soul? Later, Harald and I went to went incognito, first hiding in a remote farm in Norway, recaptured and then wandered all the way east, away from icy terrain of Scandinavia, to the prairie of Russia, where water and grass are plentiful. Here, here, there was there were no longer Knuts chasing us. 
Yaroslav I, Grand Prince of the Kievan Rus, received us warmly and offered us new fights in battle. The only way to regain glory in the favor of Odin's gods is to keep fighting. We fought against the Pechenegs on the steppes and defeated the Poles in the mountains and did great service to the Kievan Rus and the Grand Prince Yaroslav in the battle in battle after battle. As a result, Yaroslav began to appreciate this rising military genius, but Harald's status was still too far from enough to gain too too far from enough to gain the full trust of Yaroslav. Harald's uh rise to fame caused him then to be proposed by Yaroslav's daughter, uh Ilisiv. But the marriage was soon rejected by the Grand Prince. Feels bad, man. He feared that Harald had other plans. Once Yaroslav dies, Harald, who is the captain of the Kievan Rus mercenaries, will lead his army back to Scandinavia. But I have a feeling this day will come soon. Dun dun dun. All right, yeah. Great solid start for this uh, first scenario. There's all the stats and stuff. Uh, there is a lot of the match map that was not explored. Okay, so the North Sea Empire... Uh, I assume this is mostly just for show. You can see we're uh, all around here in Scandinavia. But yeah, this is a uh, you know pretty similar to the you know what we saw in Bassi, right? Because here's Denmark, there's Norway, there's Sweden. We're actually we actually more or less settled in uh, Finland uh, by the looks of things. Yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. All right, guys, that was Odin's Eye. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you all enjoyed. This is a really great map, by the way. Next up will be Thor's Hammer. So, uh, yeah, hope you all enjoyed. See you guys next time.